In this last short video, I want us to look at a case study that worked, okay? Um, and like so many things, it was sparked by a tweet. A tweet by Max Rosa. Max Rosa, who you should definitely follow on Twitter, if you're Twitter, is on Twitter, is the guy uh, who runs uh, Our World in Data, uh, which is a project that basically collects uh, data on all sorts of uh, topics and produces really excellent sort of visualizations um, and, and reports um, on various topics um, and produces a great public good in this way. Um, but what he was uh, referencing here was a Guardian article that was basically uh, telling the story of the great power switch, huh? how, how Britain uh, in the space of just a few years basically abandoned coal power and it came with a great data visualization. What you see here is basically for each of these eight years, um, you see the individual days and indicated in sort of shades of black, uh, the amount of coal that was burned to generate electricity on that day, uh, ranging from more than 50% to 0%, which is the point where it switches to green. And what we can see is that 2012, that's only eight years ago, um, Almost every day, Britain needed some coal power every day. And in the winter months, more than half of the uh, electricity production was done using coal power. But starting in sort of 2013, 2014, 2015, what we can see is that basically coal almost disappears. It gets whiter and whiter. Less and less coal is being burned most days. And there's fewer and fewer days where coal uh, coal power plants are required to supplement energy uh, production. And in the last years, 2018, 2019, 2020, there are large stretches in the summer usually where Britain basically goes for weeks and months without relying on coal power plants. And the overall reduction is from 40% of total energy production in 2012 to 7% in 2019 and even less today. That is an incredible change, an incredibly rapid reduction in the source of power generation. So how was this achieved? You know from the previous video that Britain is part of the European emission trading system. Um, but we also know that the ETS price uh, for a ton of CO2 emissions um, sort of collapsed and was way too low in the sort of 2010, 2015, 2020 period. Um, and sort of dissatisfied with this, the UK basically introduced um, a price floor in this market, a price floor in the market for uh, emissions. And they call it the G GB carbon price support because it only applies to Great Britain. And uh, they introduced this um, sort of price floor in 2013. And what you see in the graph, uh, which is referenced in a, in a report by UCL's Bartlett, uh, is basically a huge divergence in terms of energy prices between the GB energy prices and the, uh, and the EU uh, baseline, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, so this price floor was able to increase the cost of CO2 emissions um, in the UK. And the consequence of this is that energy producers have switched to more efficient production mechanisms. Some of it, of course, is imported, say from France as nuclear energy, but there's also a huge expansion of renewable energy. And unfortunately, there's also, of course, a shift to natural gas, which is another still sort of carbon emitting um, energy production process, but it is much more efficient than coal-based uh, power generation and is, of course, much better for the local environment. So this little case study basically shows how the European emissions trading system, taken together with a price floor, which is essentially kind of like a Pigovian tax, um, can have dramatic effects uh, to reduce pollution and, and sort of create cleaner air uh, and, and less uh, CO2 emissions. And it's also a really nice example of the power of data visualizations. This is a beautiful graph and it is very clear what is, uh, what is going on. And as sort of public policy students, this is something you want to aspire to as well. Huh? You learn all the, the, the necessary tools in your quantitative methods classes, but you should always think about visualizing data nicely. And this is a very powerful visualization, I think. 
And finally, you know, in this class and in sort of the public policy classes that we're that we're taking, we often think about problems uh, um, and how things are difficult and tricky and the downsides of solutions that are being offered and sort of political feasibility constraints. Mm -hmm. But I figured in this case, I leave you with a case study where sort of a clever public policy tweak uh, really made a huge impact.